Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is linear algebra. Today, I want to talk about inner products or actually I want to explain why they're useful and in what sense they generalize uh, angles and the notion of, of lengths of something. Well, it's mostly about angles, but there, there's also some lengths involved. And uh, the whole idea in the end will be that you look very carefully at something you like, like a dot product. We will see it on the next slide. And uh, it's measuring angles and lengths. Um, you boil it down to its skeleton, to its most basic properties, you generalize it, and you get generalizations of angles and lengths. Um, this is, I hope uh, by now you understand that this is kind of a general philosophy in mathematics, right? If you strip something down, to its most basic properties, and then you try to generalize from there. And that's exactly what we're doing today. So we start with something, well, fairly standard. It's called a dot product, and it's it's super easy. Or well, sometimes it's called a scalar product. It comes in the various names. But anyway, it's super easy. And it's very surprising that it contains so much information because it's, it's a very, very, very easy procedure. It's almost the easiest thing you, you can imagine, much easier than whatever matrix multiplication. Secret it is matrix multiplication, it's a special case of matrix multiplication, but we don't need to know that. Um, so um, and I illustrated here how it works for, let's say, R3. So we have to take two vectors in R3, V and W, and it's very easy. So the inner product of them is usually, or the, the dot product of them, is you sometimes denoted by, by, by those, uh, well, angle brackets, um, sometimes by dots, that's why it's called a dot product, but anyway, so as I said, it comes under various names and uh, various notations. Mathematicians can never uh, agree on any kind of notation, so uh, anyway, so, so this is the definition. It's very easy, you take, you take it coordinate-wise, you have a green coordinate, the first coordinate, you have a red coordinate, the second coordinate, and in this case, you have a purple coordinate, the third coordinate, and you just multiply them coordinate-wise, so color-wise. Right? So one times minus one, one times the fourth in this example, uh, one times one over two, and just add everything up. It's a very, very, very simple description. So this, you have a vector and if another vector, multiply them component-wise and then add up the result. And in this case, we get minus one over four, but that, that, well, that's just a calculation. And I mean, I don't know how you feel. I think this is a really, really simple definition. And it's very surprising that it contains actually geometric um, interpretation. For instance, this guy was itself. So let's say for V and W, it's of course the same. So if you take V with itself, you basically get the lengths. You get a little bit too much. So you need to, to take the square root of this, but this is the length of W. Of, of, I just write L. L of V is the length of V. So the length of V is contained in this dot product by just taking uh, something dotted with itself, take the product with itself. Um, similarly, of course, for the length of W, and I've done here the calculation for you, it doesn't, so ma doesn't matter so much. So we get those numbers, but, um, but it's, okay, that's already pretty amazing, but there's more, there's also the angle. The angle is also encoded, the angle between, so here in my picture, this, uh, uh, light blue angle in between V, so V is pointing in this direction, and W, W is pointing in this direction, um, in this case. And of course, they always lie in some plane, right? Um, they, might, they might coincide or they lie, might lie on the same line, but they lie, lie at least in some plane, and in this plane, you can measure the angle between those two vectors. And it turns out that the dot product is basically doing that in the following way. So the length of V times the length of W, and we already know them because we can compute both using the dot product. So we can kind of ignore them. So, so let's say both of them are one. You have unit vectors, vectors of length one. They are kind of normalized to be of length one. Then, so let's, let's ignore those vectors. Um, they are there, but let's ignore them. That's what I'm trying to say. Then, um, the cosine of the angle between those two vectors is actually the dot product. 
So in order to get the uh, the theta here, the, the angle, you you basically reverse the cosine. So you take arc cos the arc cosine of um, whatever. In, in this case, it's this number because we have still have to divide by those lengths, blah, 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 whatever. Basically, what you do is the arc cos of uh, the dot product is the angle between those, those two vectors. And I said again, this is amazing. It's a really, really simple definition, component-wise multiplication and addition. And you get the length and the angle. I mean, this is really good, okay? So that's something you should like. Well, maybe you should, you shouldn't, but at least that I like. And um, well, then you would, just try to generalize it, right? Because that's what scientists do. That's what mathematicians do. Well, scientists in general and mathematicians in particular. Um, for example, an idea which we will generalize is the following. Of course, you can talk then about um, whether things are orthogonal, a very easy definition, right? So, so this thing measures the, the angle. So angle of 90 degrees would be when they are orthogonal, like here. And here, and this would be orthogonal, of course. Or if they would lie slightly differently, like this one. And here's the corresponding coordinate vectors, if you if you if you wonder. Yeah. And if we would do now calculate the scalar product, you would see um, that the angle is 90 degrees. So the theta here. So usually the theta would come in in, in values of pi, but anyway, you can also think in, in degrees if you, if you don't, don't like uh, multiples of pi. Um, so anyway, um, so 90 degrees. So it turns out that this happens, uh, if you think about it a little bit, you get this description. So let's say my my um, my, my vectors are not zero, because for, for the zero vector, everything is stupid anyway. So let's assume they're not zero, so the length is not zero, so I, I can basically ignore the length, I can, I can uh, divide it out. Then two non-zero vectors are orthogonal if and only if the, this dot product is zero. Okay, so V and W are non-zero. That's the only assumption you need to add here. As I said, because of the zero vector, everything is stupid anyway. And then you can ignore the lengths, as I said. And basically what it's saying that um, is that you get 90 degrees here if and only if the scalar product is zero, the dot product is zero. And as we will see, that makes sense to take this actually as a definition. So when you ask, okay, you can measure angles and whatever, but, but what does this actually mean? Just take kind of the output of, of, of kind of a dot product like uh, definition uh, thing as a definition. And in order to do that, you basically strip down the dot product to its basic properties. And it's a very easy calculation. So you basically have four properties, A, B, C, D. And they look as follows. So the D is kind of easy. So if um, V is not zero, then then the dot product of V with itself, which is the length, is bigger than zero. But, but that makes geometrically totally sense. And you can actually calculate it if you want in coordinates. So just using this kind of definition. Um, also something that is easy to see is symmetry, right? So V and W, uh, dot product is the same as the other way around, W and V. You can calculate this in coordinates, or you can just think of what this actually means in terms of these geometric pictures and also pretty clear. Um, you have invariance under scaling. So you could pull out scalars and it's linear. So those are kind of the four easy properties which you can check by hand on the definition, or you can look at the geometric picture if you want. All of these are, are totally legit geometric operations in some sense. And this is called, it's linear. Um, okay, linear is my purple and my green one. Symmetric is my red one. And the last property is called positive definite. Um, it's the blue one. That's just what it is. And you just, then, as I said, the general philosophy, those are the four properties. You can make sense of angles, you can make sense of orthogonality, you can make sense of lengths. So just define an inner product um, to, to, to be a map from, from any vector space to R, satisfying exactly those properties. So uh, 
uh, purple, green, red, blue. Purple, green, or oh, what, what? It was light green. Light green, um, red, and blue. Or slightly reordered here on the slide. But basically, that, that's what it is. So it's linear, it's symmetric, it's positive, definitely. So you can basically ignore, and, and that's the definition. You can basically ignore the bottom part here. Um, so what it's saying is, well, I don't need to choose R here. I can choose C if you like complex numbers. Then you have to be a little bit careful with, with the symmetric condition. Anyway, so for R, those are the definitions. And anything that satisfies that is an inner product. And anything that satisfies that has a notion of orthogonality, has a notion of angles, has a notion of lengths. So by definition, this will be the notion, notion of lengths. Like it's the lengths with respect to that inner product, of course. It's not necessarily the length that you think it is, um, but it's absolutely a legit definition. It's valid, it works in certain circumstances, and why not? So why not try to do it? And it's actually really powerful. It's, it's the sa same story as usual. Just take something you really like, generalize it, strip it down to the basic properties and then just go with the basic properties. And this is really, really a, a zoo of different things. So we have seen this one. So for vectors in Rn, you can take this component-wise definition. You can define something that looks completely different like a scalar product on an inner product on matrices by taking the basically the trace. You can do something, something extremely funny. I mean, we're doing linear algebra, but can do some little bit of analysis at least. Um, this is a funny definition. Um, so for any function, um, f and g, so here's a g missing, um, they go from the unit interval to r, and you can define an inner product by this formula, by measuring, um, uh, well, the, uh, the integral from one, to, I've just chosen one and zero here, but you can of course do it from A to B if you want. Um, and just taking this integral here. And orthogonality in this setup, if I would have, let's say, to take A to be minus one, and I take B to be one, orthogonality in this setup would just exactly mean that, well, so this is F times G, and you take the interval of F times G, and this just really means that those but the, the integral, the interval, the integral of f times g is just measuring those areas here, and orthogonality means that underneath f times g, those, those values would cancel. So it's a completely different definition of orthogonality. It satisfies exactly the same properties as the usual orthogonality, um, but it's just completely different. But it, it looks like a not too bad definition if you care about uh, functions, right? Okay, so takeaway message. Use inner product is just generalization of the standard measuring of angles in in whatever R three, R four, R two, whatever you like, and you can just then apply it to, to various contexts like 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 functions, which is which is pretty cool. Okay, thank you very much, and hope to see you next time.